next case we have is, is a child where um, this child had actually come in with an enlarging chest wall mass. You can see that this is a skin color, it's soft tissue mass. It has a slight bluish color, which makes you think that it could be vascular. But on the other hand, things can be vascular because they're a highly vascular tumor, or they can be vascular because it's a vascular malformation. And you certainly, in looking at this, can't tell from the surface what the nature of this is. So you know you're going to have to do imaging to try and see if that will help you to give a firm diagnosis. So that would be certainly our next step. And to talk uh, as a, as a non-radiologist here, what's interesting about this case is it's not following the clinical rules. This mass didn't enlarge and then regress at a year as an infantile hemangioma would. At two years, in general, you would have seen that, nor did it behave like a typical venous malformation, which would be our other favorite mimic of that with a commensurate growth. It kind of went along and then got bigger all of a sudden right before this, uh, which raises a red flag for us because usually we can tell uh, clinically, and if we can't tell clinically, oftentimes we can tell with imaging. This makes us feel a little bit better, very well circumscribed, a lesion enhances from the center out. Um, perhaps there's a flebolith or two in there. Additional imaging might help. If you were to just get a simple plain film, I don't think there's a need to do a CAT scan in here, but if you did a CAT scan, which sometimes we get from the outside, we wouldn't order one on this kid. You would probably see these flebolists all over the place. But that would cinch the diagnosis and make us feel much better about this unusual clinical presentation. But we have one other thing that we, we say here don't let the skin stand between you and a diagnosis. So this is not something I would personally biopsy in dermatology clinic, but we have surgical expertise in the form of our ENT and plastic surgery colleagues. And, and, if we're, and the other reason we were concerned this was not, for example, an infantile hemangioma is not just that it, we wouldn't expect it necessarily to be gone by two years of age, but we wouldn't expect it to be continuing to grow at two years of age because growth of infantile hemangiomas tends to be uh, tailing off by about a year of age. So that was really an important clue. In this case, this was removed surgically. The other reason to remove it was it, it would be easy to cure surgically. Um, and so you would get a diagnosis and a therapy at the same time. And this did turn out to be a, a, a well-circumscribed venous malformation. And oftentimes we have to remind ourselves about making the diagnosis because we, in particular, Alona, is so good at the clinical diagnosis and we meaning Dr. Hess is so good at the imaging diagnosis that almost all the time we can come to an appropriate conclusion.